الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم ايكم احسن عملا سبحان ربي رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وبارك وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى هو ذا الرب he has created all of us for one purpose and that purpose is that we worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah ta'ala says wa ma khalaqtu al-jinna wal insa illa liya'budun that i have not created men and jinn except that they worship me the only and the only reason the one and the only reason for all of us being in this dunya is worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we often think that you know we are here to eat or drink or get married have children have houses have cars we have made these things as the goal the maqsad of our life these are not the goal these are not the maqasid the goal is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to go in a state that Allah ta'ala is happy with us. These are the means to attain that. These are the means to attain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala has given us the blessing of the eyes so that we can read Quran. Just imagine there are people who are born blind and they never see Quran in their life. Subhanallah. They never see their parents. What a blessing the eye is. The tongue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this blessing of tongues so that we can recite Quran, so that we can talk to people, we can invite people towards the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can share our, the feelings that we have. Sometimes we have certain feelings, feelings of sadness, feeling of happiness. And we use this blessing of tongue to actually express ourselves to our parents, to our husbands, to our wives, to our children. It's a blessing. It's the means to attain the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that, you guarantee me two things, I guarantee you paradise. One of them is tongue and the other is guard your modesty and I will guarantee you paradise. So with this tongue we can attain paradise. This is the means to achieve the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us is actually a means to achieve that goal of pleasing Allah ta'ala. This is the purpose of our life. Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an that تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ That be blessed is he who in whose hand is the dominion and he has power over everything الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ He has, is the one who created life and death. Why? لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So that he can test you he can test you that who comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with good actions. This is the purpose of life and death. We have forgotten our purpose, our maqsad. Why are we all here? Everybody is busy in doing something. Everybody has their own goals. Everybody has their own dreams. There is only one purpose, one maqsad, and that is to go back to Allah ta'ala in a state that our actions are good. 
So what does Allah Ta'ala say? That He has created this life and death so that He can test as to who comes back to Allah Ta'ala with good actions. Actions are necessary, number one. Actions are necessary. Some people, subhanAllah, they think that having Iman in the heart is enough for the savior of human beings. It's a deception of shaitan. Actions are necessary. Some people don't pray. Some people pray, but pray like four times a day, three times a day. Everybody has made their own shariat. They think that they are righteous. Oh, I pray five, four times a day. I miss Fajr, but I pray for The rest of the prayers I pray, as if it's a new shariat that has come for them. There are people I've seen that, I've heard that there are people who come back from work and they pray Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib at the time of Isha. Oh, I don't get time in the... In, in, at my work, so I mean, we are, I'm in a meeting all day long, so I pray Zohar Asr Maghrib at the time of Isha. Who has allowed you to do that? People have made their own shariat. Some people don't pray at all. Some people don't fast. Some people don't give zakat. I've heard people even arguing that, you know, all what you need is a good character and that's it, you don't need to have these rituals. So everybody is, has, not everybody, there are many people who have made their own shariat. Some people don't even believe in actions, but know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants actions. Allah ta'ala wants that we do actions. All humankind is in loss, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except the people who believe and do good actions, righteous actions. Actions are necessary. We have to strive to do actions. We all must strive to do good actions. But one thing that we need to, first of all, action is necessary. Two, what sort of actions? Good actions. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنْ وَعَمَلًا Not أَكْسَنْ وَعَمَلًا It is not about quantity, it is about quality. It's not about quantity, it is about quality. Allah Ta'ala wants good actions, not a lot of actions. Allah Ta'ala wants quality, not quantity. In fact, there's a hadith, أَحَبُّ الْأَعْمَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَتْبَمُهَا وَإِنْ قَلَّا the best actions in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the consistent ones, even if they are little. It's not about quantity. It is never about quantity. It is about quality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good actions, quality actions. Subhanallah, we are striving at step number one. We are not even doing actions. Forget about having quality actions. Subhanallah, there are many of us who want quality in things. There are many women who would only want a certain brand of bag. There are people who would only want a certain brand of car. We human beings, we want quality. We go to the grocery store and if we have to buy, say for example, bananas and oranges, we'll go and check every orange if there is something wrong with that. And we only put that in the bag that we feel is the best. Isn't it? We want quality. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also wants quality. He does not want quantity. This is a misconception that, oh, do as much as you can, but irrespective of what the state of your heart is. Allah ta'ala wants the state of the heart, that state of the heart that will bring that quality in the actions that we do. Remember that. Ikhlas, number one, sincerity. Everything done with ikhlas. Pure sincerity only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, what will happen on the day of judgment? There is a hadith narrated by Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he would sometimes narrate this hadith and will fall unconscious. He, he has narrated that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that the first three people who will go to the fire on the day of judgment will be who? Number one, an alim. An alim. Ilm that is, that becomes the means of attaining darajat in the sight of Allah. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Alim. 
Allah Ta'ala will call him on the day of judgment and he will ask him, what did you do with your life? He said, Ya Allah, I learned ilm so that I could pass that on. And I could act on this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will say, no. You learned ilm so that people could call you alim, so that people could respect you, honor you, you got what you wanted, I have nothing for you anymore in the fire. Second, a shaheed, a martyr, he will be called, what did you do with your life? Ya Allah, I fought in your cause and I died in your cause. He, Allah Ta'ala will say, no, you did not die, fight in my cause and died in my cause. You fought and died so that people will call you a brave man after you are dead. People said, called you a brave man, you got what you wanted, I have nothing for you anymore in the fire. A third person will be a ghani, a rich man, a generous man, who had spent a lot of wealth. He will be called, what did you do? Ya Allah, all the wealth that you gave me, I spent it in your cause. Allah Ta'ala will say, no, you did not spend it in my cause. You spent it so that people call you a generous man. You got what you wanted, I have nothing for you anymore in the fire. It's not about quantity of actions, it's about quality of actions. Allah Ta'ala does not want quantity. Allah Ta'ala wants quality, sincerity, ikhlas is the number one thing that adorn the, the, every action. And the second thing that adorn every action is the acceptance, kubuliyat. We do a lot of things but we don't know if they are accepted or not. The true actions are those that are accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah, it can never make us arrogant. This thought that if my action is accepted or not, whatever we do, we are the students of a madrasa, we are ulama, we are muftis, we are mashayikh, we are qadi, we are whatever we are. We are the muazzin, an imam, a reciter, a hafiz, a qari, you name it. We can never be arrogant about whatever we have done with our life because we don't know if our action has been accepted in the sight of Allah Ta'ala or not. We have a hope, yes. But if we are arrogant about whatever we do, then there is a possibility that it might not be accepted because Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah Ta'ala accepts from the people of taqwa. And that having arrogance in the heart is not taqwa. And it is a possibility that that thing is not accepted. So we can never be arrogant on whatever we do, irrespective of whatever, what, whatever we are. So the second thing that adorn our action, that beautifies our action, that makes it a quality action, is the acceptance. And for that we have to be humble people. We have to be humble people. SubhanAllah, Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah ta'ala, he for 40 years he prayed Fajr with the wudu of Isha. 40 years. Some people, you know, these people who always are criticizing, oh how can a person pray Fajr with wudu of Isha for 40 years? Didn't we sleep for 40 years? Well, it means most of the time. You know, for example, somebody is, he smiles a lot. What do you say? He is always smiling. Is he smiling when he's sleeping at night? <laughs> no. Most of the time he is smiling. So it means that the person is doing something, majority of the time, he says, as if he is doing it all the time. So it is written that he prayed with Fajr with the wudu of Isha for 40 years. But what will he do at the end of the day? At the time of the Hajjad, he will raise his hand, he would cry, Ya Allah, ma abadna ka haqqa ibadatik. Ya Allah, did not do your worship the way that worship should have been done. Because he had that fear of acceptance. Always humble. Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala, Amirul Mu'mineen fil hadith. Amirul Mu'mineen fil hadith, that was his title. Some ulama and muhaddisin have even have argued even Imam Bukhari rahmatullah alayhi was a, was a bigger muhaddis or Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullah alayhi was bigger. Even this sort of discussion also comes in the books. It's such a big muhaddis. Forty, almost 4,000 students will sit in one of his dars of hadith. At the time of his death, he was on his deathbed and he asked his students that put me on the ground. 
and the students of course with other that they had they 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 screamed they started crying you know sheikh you know how can we do that put you on ground he said ah this is hukam <coughs> this is my hukam it's on top of adab alam ru fawq al adab you put me on the ground so they put him on the ground he didn't say to allah ya allah i did so much service of khidmat of the hadith 4000 people were in the dars of my one dars of my hadith he started rubbing his cheek on the floor and he said ya allah have mercy on the old age of abdul this was the humility that these people had this adorns the actions that what we have that what we do we have to make sure that we start with ikhlas and we are always fearful if my action will be accepted or not and always cry in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for the acceptance this is something that we all need to do this makes that action beautiful alladhi khalaqa almawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala it is about the quality of actions this is the test of life that what do you do what do you do with every situation that comes in your life i was telling this morning to my friends that every single situation that is created is from allah there is nothing called coincidence there is nothing called ittifaqan everything is qudratan everything is destined everything is written the fact that all of us are sitting here is written by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there was somebody who was supposed to come here didn't come it is written by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala somebody is stuck in the traffic right now he didn't reach here at 7:30 so written by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything is written every situation is written if my wife doesn't talk to me properly one day it is written if my husband doesn't behave to me properly on one day it is written allah taala creates these situations in order to test us as to how do you behave in that situation if you're stuck in a traffic it's a situation created by allah if we are on the road trying to find a parking spot if we don't get it it's a situation that is created to us by allah every single thing is a situation created to us for us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what alladhi khalaqa almawta wal hayata liyabluwakum ayyukum ahsanu amala do we control our anger when somebody doesn't talk to us properly do we forgive people when somebody do misbehaves with us do we get panic when we are stuck in traffic banging on the steering wheel and you know trying screaming at the wife who is sitting next to us bichari usne kuch bhi nahi kiya she didn't do anything but we are just shouting at her wow allah taala tests us well, how do we behave in certain conditions all of the conditions have been created for me and you so that he checks on us how do you behave what do you choose akhirat dunya a person gets a 100000 pound job and is working in a bank dealing with interest money and he also gets a job at the very same time possibly a 60000 pound job but that's totally halal money test what do you choose 40000 pound more or you choose that 60000 pound thinking knowing that this is something that is haram test these are the situations that have been created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and you every single thing not a leaf falls from the tree but it is in the knowledge of allah every single leaf <coughs> falls with the permission of allah bismillah nothing happens without the permission of allah it everything is written for me and you so that we can be tested by allah taala how do you behave what do you do so we have to be those people of allah my friends be people of zikr be people of allah said abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he has said that there are seven things which are beautified by seven other things there are seven things that are beautified that are adorned by seven other things he says that the adornment of getting a blessing is in being grateful for that blessing the adornment of getting a blessing having a blessing is in the gratefulness of that blessing yani any blessing that you get you will beautify that blessing by being grateful on that blessing what does it mean realizing that every single thing is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala realizing that every single thing is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can thank him thank you ya allah this is the adornment of getting that blessing 
It is very amazing. He offers me a cup of glass and I say thank you. And subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala gives us blessings day in and day out and we don't even say thank you to Him. I often tell this to my friends as well. So you call, ask people, how are you doing? And subhanAllah, there are many people, terrible. What, what went wrong? It's, it's, it's raining since last night. Subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala has given you eyes, Allah Ta'ala has given you tongue, Allah Ta'ala has given you ears, you have limbs that you can walk with, your hands that you can hold with, you have a house, you have a roof that you can save yourself from that rain, you have an umbrella that you can take out, you have a spouse, you have parents, you have children, you have food that you eat, you name it, you have a heart that pumps blood every single second of your of your life and you have lungs that you can breathe with and you have stomach that you can that digest the food and you go to the toilet and you name it, you go on, 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 on. Terrible. Sometimes people, you ask people, how are you doing? Not so bad. <laughs> Many people do that. Not so bad. What does it mean? Yani, I'm bad but not so bad. <laughs> Subhanallah. What uh, ungratefulness. What ungratefulness. Why can't we say that I am so thankful to the blessings of Allah Ta'ala, even if I want to thank Allah Ta'ala all the time, it will still not be enough. Why can't we say that? Allah ka bohat shukar, bohat karam, bohat ihsan. Why can't we say that? Why is our tongue so small? So Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that if you get a blessing, then you adorn that blessing by thanking Allah subhanahu ta'ala for that blessing. Get into the habit of saying Alhamdulillah, uh, every single thing, Alhamdulillah. You get a parking spot, Alhamdulillah. You get into your house, Alhamdulillah. You know, you, you, your child has gone to school, he comes back home, Alhamdulillah. Your wife is out, she comes back, Alhamdulillah. Your husband is out, he comes back, Alhamdulillah. Get into the habit of saying Alhamdulillah. They're all blessings. They're all blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala says, la in shakartum la azidannakum. If you are thankful for the blessings given to you by Allah, Allah Ta'ala will increase you in your blessings. Wala in kafartum. But if you are ungrateful, inna azabi la shadeed. Know then that my punishment is very severe. I will take away those blessings. I can. I can't take away those blessings. You're not worthy of getting those blessings because you're not grateful for those blessings. So please be get into the habit of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala says that, وَقَلِيلٌ مِنْ عِبَادِي الشُّكُورِ There are very few of my people, my ibad, that actually thank for my blessings. So please, and we all, as I said, that we have to realize, oh, everything is a blessing. Every single thing. Our, our health is a blessing. Our age is a blessing. Our wealth is a blessing. Our time is a blessing. People don't even realize that. Our time is a blessing. There are some people who were just hanging around in a mall. What were you doing in the mall? I was just killing time. Well, time is not a thing that you kill. It is a blessing. Every single breath is a blessing. One breath that, 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 that is past, it is not going to come back to you. It was a blessing that you could have used in order to attain the nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time, we don't kill time. You save time, you use time, you make use of it. Prophet has said that in this hadith, that take benefit of five things before five things, right? Take benefit of your young age before you become old. I'm getting old, I can feel it. That strength that I used to have maybe ten years ago, I don't have that strength anymore. And all these young people are sitting, I'm telling you, this energy, these muscles, these abs are not going to remain. Possibly you will remain with one ab. <laughs> So please, take, take, take care of your youth before you get old. Your health before your sickness. Your wealth before your poverty. Your free time before your preoccupation. And your life before your death. So we have to realize all of these are blessings. And everybody is blessed, I can tell you that. Everybody is blessed. Is there anybody who has, who, who has not eaten for any day of his life? Is there anybody who has slept in a tent for a night? Well, there are some people who choose that. <laughs> but anybody has forced you that you, you don't have a house and you are, you are living in a tent? No. We all have blessings. We should not be complaining. 
Because if we complain all the time, then you know we are being ungrateful. So the adornment of blessings is in gratefulness. The second thing that Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said, that the adornment of calamities is in patience. You know, Allah ta'ala, as I said, is testing us. Sometimes He gives us blessings, sometimes He takes away that blessing. So taking away of a blessing is a calamity. The calamity is defined as taking the loss of a blessing. Once Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa went in his house and suddenly the candle that was that was there, it, 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 it went dark. So he said, Inna lillahi wa inna lihi raji'un. See, the Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she asked, Ya Rasulullah, you recite that when you have a calamity. He said, it's a calamity. If you lose a blessing, it's a calamity. And Allah ta'ala tests us with calamities. Allah ta'ala tests us with calamities so that الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ وَمَلَا What do you do? Let me test you. What do you do? So, we, so Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that adornment of calamities is that you remain patient in those times. Once, you know, Mahmud Ghaznavi, who was a king, he had a slave called Ayaz. There's a very famous, you know, Ayaz and Mahmud. So Mahmud Ghaznavi once, he cut fruits and gave to everybody. And it was a very bitter fruit. And Ayaz, everybody took the fruit and they, they were making faces, oh, you know, what a bitter fruit. Ayaz took and he ate and without any expression on his face. So Mahmud Ghaznavi, he asked Ayaz, don't you find it bitter, Ayaz? He said, yes, O king, but you have been giving me fruits that were sweet all the time. If you gave me fruit that was bitter today, so what's the big deal about it? We have so many blessings. And one calamity falls and we are screaming, shouting, you know, behaving like animals. Once Sayyidah Rabia Basri rahimahullah ta'ala, she saw one of her students was tying a headband. And she called him and said, what's up? Why are you tying a headband? He said, I'm having a headache. She said, after how long did you get this headache? He said, he, he took a, whatever a time period. He said, say, let's say, he said, 10 years. So she said that, why didn't you wear a headband of sugar for those 10 years? Today you got a headache after 10 years and you are tying this headband, telling everybody that I've got a headache. Subhanallah. Majority of us enjoy blessings. Once in a while, Allah Ta'ala tests us with a calamity and we misbehave. So we have to be patient. And I tell you, being impatient is not going to get you anything as well. Say for example, somebody dies in your family. If you start screaming, shouting, tearing your clothes, will that person come back? No. And you are going to be patient in three days time frame, five days time frame, one month time frame, right? So if you have to do that, why can't you day, do it day number one? And it will get you reward from Allah Ta'ala. And what a reward? Inna Allah ma'as sabirin. Allah Ta'ala's ma'iyat is with the people who show patience. Allah Akbar. So we have to be patient. I'll tell you a story. Once a, a sheikh, he went to Haram and he saw a woman who was doing tawab and she was saying, Ya Allah, I'm happy with you at this state. Ya Allah, I'm happy with you in this state. Ya Allah, I'm happy with you in this state. And she was just saying that all during her tawab. So this sheikh, after the tawab, she, he went to that woman and asked, you know, why are you saying it all throughout your tawab? She said, you know what, I had three little children. And I was cooking and my baby, small crawling baby, was with me. And suddenly I heard some strange noise from the room. So I went into the room and what I saw that my eldest son had slaughtered my middle son. So actually the, 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 the eldest son, he saw his father slaughtering a goat and he was telling his middle, his brother, younger brother, you know, dad, this, this, just did to the goat, I'll tell you how did he do that. And he actually slaughtered the middle son. And then he, because he saw blood, he went and he ran and he hid in a, in a fireplace, at a place where there were woods. So she said, I went searching for the eldest boy and subhanAllah, he was hiding there, there was a snake there, he bit him, it bit him. And he died. I said, in the meantime, I was seeing, where is my baby, the crawling baby? And I saw that I had left him near the cooking place. He had actually crawled into the fire. He passed away as well. So she, 
three sons died at the same time. She said that I made preparations for their burial. I buried them. I've come here and I'm saying to Allah, Ya Allah, I'm happy with you even in this state. Patience. People have showed a lot of patience. And what happens to us? Nothing, relatively speaking. So adornment of calamities is showing, in showing patience. patience. And Sayyid Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu is saying that adornment of knowledge is in forbearance. MashaAllah, everybody who is in this madrasa and trying to achieve the state of being inheritor of the Prophet, Allah Akbar, what a state. Al-Ulama Varasatul Anbiya. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu has said that if you are, have knowledge, make sure that you have hilm as well. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَلِيمًا Allah Ta'ala has knowledge and He has hilm. What is hilm? Forbearance. That you are, have the ability to forgive people quickly despite of knowing their shortcomings. Allah Ta'ala knows every single thing what we have. Allah Ta'ala knows that what goes through our mind. يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُنُ مَا تُخْفِ sudur. He knows the mistress of the eyes. We think nobody is looking. Allah Ta'ala is looking at us all the time. We think that we can hide from our parents and go to all of these websites and YouTubes and Facebooks and Skypes and all of what not. And we think that we can hide and we can do whatever. Well, Allah Ta'ala is looking. Allah Ta'ala is looking. He knows every single thing. He knows what's going in the hearts. What are you thinking? Despite of that fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not take away our eyes when we don't look at things that we shouldn't be looking at. What if Allah ta'ala had taken away our eyes right there and then? What would have happened then? This is hell. This is hell. Allah ta'ala knows our shortcomings. He forgives us. He gives us time. But we can never not be arrogant at that. Know that Allah ta'ala can punish people if we remain arrogant. But this is him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish us. At the very same time, he's forgiving. This is what we want. If you're learning ilm, what we also need to develop along with that is forbearance, my friends. We have to be people of hill. We have to be people of character. We have to be those people who, are, who, who can forgive people easily. That is something we must develop. This is the shahan of the ilm. It, is not, it, it does not work that you are people of ilm, you are ulama, you are students, and subhanAllah, you are shouting at people and you are misbehaving. And subhan, some people you know, say, oh, I have jalali tabiyat. <laughs> Hiding their anger, oh, I have jalali tabiyat. Well, what if Allah Ta'ala shows His jalal on you? What if Allah Ta'ala shows His jalal? What will happen then? Have you ever thought about it? So please be people of forbearance. Please, please be people of helm. And look into the seerat the way the Prophet ﷺ had helm. There was a Jew alim, Sayyidina Zayd bin Sani, radiallahu anhu, became a sahabi later on. He said that I had, the, the, the alamat, the signs of the prophethood, I had seen all of that in the Prophet ﷺ except two. And he said the one that I did not find, I had not known by that time is the number one that his helm will overcome his anger. And number two, that the more you will be ignorant with him, the his helm will increase. This is the sign of the prophethood in their books. That's what he knew. He said, I wanted to test that. So the long story cutting short, he gave some loan to the Prophet ﷺ. And he said to him that, you know, you return to it to me at a certain, on a certain date. Three days before that date, he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he grabbed him from his shirt and from his trouser. And he said that, what sort of people are you who don't even take care of the rights of the people? He said, your, your family is like that. Imagine, not even insulting him, insulting his whole family. Oh, son of Abdul Muttalib, your whole family is like that. See, the Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was staring. He, his face got red. What are you saying? He said, if I would not have felt a fear that you will lose your right, then I would have killed you right there, right here. And if I kill you, then you will not get your loan back. If I had not that fear, I would have killed you right now. And Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was smiling. 
Look at somebody that who was grabbed and he was insulted. If it was me and you, what we would have done? You, you ask this question to yourself. He was smiling. He said to Omar, Omar, this is not the right thing what you said. You should have said to him that this is not the right way of asking. And you should have, you should have said to me that you should pay back his loan. Allahu <laughs> Akbar. And then he said to Sayyidina Umar, Umar, go and return his loan right now. Even if there were, even there were three days left for the Umar, go return his loan right now and give him 20 dirhams more. For what? Because you insulted him. You insulted him. Go and pay, pay for the thing, this thing that, for, for, for the insult that you have given to him. Go and pay him 20 dirhams more. This was the hilm. And this comes with, this has to be with the knowledge. If people have knowledge or people are the students of knowledge, they have to have helm. They have to have that patience, that forbearance. Otherwise, you know, this ilm is, is very fake ilm. It's not teaching us what we should be learning, what Allah Ta'ala demands from us. And then he said, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the adornment of a student, listen, adornment of a student of knowledge is in humility. Adornment of a student of knowledge is in humility. You cannot learn true knowledge unless you become humble people. And that's what I was telling my friends out there. We have to show other, my friends. Other with the teachers, other with the ilm. It is in humility. If you don't, you know, bend down, it's, you're not going to fill your heart up with the nur of ilm. You have to bend down in front of your teachers. That's why other is taught. Man tawada alillahi rafa'ahullah. Whoever shows humility to Allah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ta'ala then raises him up. We have to show humility to ilm, to students, uh, sorry, to, uh, to the teachers, and to our fellow students, of course. Somebody asked, you know, how did Sayyidina Anwar Shah Kashmiri rahimahullah ta'ala, in fact, Mufti Kafayatullah sahab rahmatullah alayhi, he asked his student once, do you, do you know how did Mawlana Anwar Shah Kashmiri sahab rahmatullah alayhi became Mawlana Anwar Shah Kashmiri sahab, such a big muhaddis? So students said, oh, they gave all their different reasons. He said, no. He said, once I asked this question to Mawlana Anwar Shah sahab, Kashmiri sahab rahmatullah alayhi, and he told me because of my adab to my teachers to the books. He said that, you know, people who are in higher classes, you, the, the books of hadith and they're hashtias, right? So they're hashtias written all over, some tilted, upside down. He said, I never turned the book to read hashtias. I followed the book. If there was a hashtia written upside down, I will go on the other side of the table to read the hashtia. I never made the book follow me. I followed the book. Allah Akbar Atta. So the, the adornment of a student is in showing humility. And number five, he said that the adornment of, of a muhsin, that if you do a son on somebody, the adornment of that person is that you hide your favors for, for that you have done on that person, that you have, you have given to that person. Hide it. It's not that, you know, you tell everybody, by the way, I, oh, I was serving and my feet were aching, but I thought that I was still standing, I'll still keep standing, I'll still serve. Well, you're just showing favors. Don't show your favors. Allah Ta'ala says, don't destroy your charities by showing favors and by harming people. So make sure that you hide your favors if you have done any favor on anybody. And then he said that the adornment of prayer is in khushu. The adornment of praying is in khushu. Ta'deel of the arkan, making sure that your heart is connected to Allah Ta'ala. We are not robots. We are not mechan mechanic. We are not, uh, we don't do mechanical movements. We are here to pray in front of Allah. We are human beings. We have emotions. We must connect to Allah Ta'ala when we come and say Allahu Akbar. So we have to have khushu in prayers. That's something that we must learn. When we learn the fiqh of the prayers, you know, what are the faraid, wajibat, mustahibat, sunnahs of the prayer. We also must learn that how do we connect our heart with Allah Ta'ala when we stand in the prayers. <coughs> this is something we also must learn. So the adornment of the prayer is in khushu. And then he said that adornment of having fear of Allah is in leaving of the sins. 
Adornment and having fear of Allah is in the leaving of the sins. We all say we have the fear, but all of us sin, Allahu Akbar. Very ajeeb, both strange. That all of us say, we say that we fear Allah, but all of us still sin. We still do whatever we feel like. We still go on our Facebooks and our internets and YouTubes and watch Hollywoods and Bollywoods and have rela- relations and illegal relations and all of that. We still do that. Why is that? How is it a possibility that you say that you have fear and you still sin? It's not possible. So the adornment of fear of Allah is in leaving of the sins. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَا النَّفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ Allah Ta'ala says, if you have fear of Allah, then you must control the desires of your nafs. And if you do that, then paradise is your abode. So we need to make sure that we have these things. SubhanAllah, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq has done us so much ihsan on this ummah. And these are beautiful statements that he has given. So make sure that we, have, we adorn our actions, my friends. We adorn our actions, have sincerity, have ikhlas, do everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make sure that you are humble people, you are always asking Allah ta'ala after the things that we do, after the actions we do. And make sure that you develop that khushu and you develop that fear and you develop that adab. And you develop the gratefulness and patience in your heart. You have to learn that. And this is what Mashaikh taught. Ulama taught the outward, the Mashaikh teach the inward. And we must also learn inward of everything that we do and that gives it the beauty and that gives, makes it beautiful. So please, be people of outward, be people of inward, be people of Ihsan. Ihsan is from Husn which means beauty. We, are, we learn Iman and Islam but we often we don't learn Ihsan. We also learn Ihsan. أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاهُ No, live in your life in a way as if Allah Ta'ala is looking at you all the time. Have that istazar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please. This is why we are here for, this is the test of the life, this is what will be tested with. الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ أَمَنًا May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand and act upon all what we have learned wa akhru da'wana an alhamdulillah rabbil alamin before dua <coughs> you know my shaykh have uh, taught a few kalimat of tawbah they are just the renewal of our iman and asking allah ta'ala that he forgives us of our past sins so inshallah ta'ala if you can recite those kalimat with that intention with sincerity with ikhlas inshallah and inshallah do tawbah from your from your sins inshallah tonight this very moment is the time that we should do tawbah from our sins Make a commitment with Allah Ta'ala. Ya Allah, I have done what I have done. Inshallah, from this point onwards, I'm not going to be dis- be- disobey you, Inshallah. Follow Shariat, follow Sunnah, please. So Inshallah, if anybody wants to do bad, and these are the same, same kalimat, Inshallah, ta'ala, if others can recite with the niyat of Tawbah. Alhamdulillah, wa kafa, wa salamun ala ibadihi ladhina astafa amma ba'ad. So if you can recite these kalimat with sincerity, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله آمنت بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله واليوم الآخر والقدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى والبعث بعد الموت آمنت بالله كما هو بأسمائه وصفاته وقبلت جميع أحكامه إقرار باللسان وتصديق بالقلب أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وأتوب إليه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. There are few mamulat that our masayikh have taught. If you're bound with a shaykh, whatever mamulat he has given you, just follow that, just stick to that. Others, if you're not connected and you're not doing any mamulat, there are few that our masayikh have taught us. One is istighfar hundred times morning, evening. Istighfarullah rabbi min kulli zambin wa atubu 100 times morning, 100 times in the evening. 
The second is Ruj Sharif. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallam. It's also hundred times morning and in the evening. The third is recitation of the Quran. The idea is to, to read Quran cover to cover. I mean, we do Surah Yasin, Mulk, Waqiyah, Rahman, that's good, but also we should recite the whole, uh, the whole Quran. So do it every day, even if it's little, you know, one page, two page, half a juice, one juice, whatever. And the third is Muraqaba. Muraqaba is doing the dhikr of Allah Ta'ala in the heart. So the way to do that is that you close your eyes and you just have this intention that Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on the heart and the heart is doing the zikr. Allah, 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 I'm listening. So just sit for some time with this intention. Don't say anything with your tongue. Just sit with this intention, closed eyes, cut off from dunya, that Allah's mercy is falling on the heart. Heart is doing Allah, Allah, I'm listening. 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes. These four mamulat, very powerful askar. And inshallah, as I said, please live a life of shariat, sunnat. Please don't sin. Please follow sunnahs. Please memorize masnoon du'as. Read masnoon du'as at their appropriate times, appropriate situations. Please do that. Please get into the habit of that. May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq. If you can do muraqba for a couple of minutes before du'a, inshallah, just close your eyes. Just have this intention that Allah Ta'ala's mercy is falling on the heart. And the heart is doing the zikr of Allah with this blessed name. Allah, Allah, Allah. لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله سبحانك يا سبحان ربي لا إله إلا الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكر إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا رحم الراحمين جاكرم الأكرمين يا كريم يا غفار يا رحيم يا ودود يا وهاب يا ستار يا ستار يا ستار يا هنهان يا منان يا الله يا الله please accept this gathering from all of us يا الله all of these people who have come يا الله students of this مدرسة يا الله علماء يا الله مشايخ يا رحم الرحمين all of these have come يا الله just for your sake have gathered together for your sake Ya Allah, we please beg you, Ya Allah, please accept it from all of us. Ya Allah, we are not worthy of conducting these sort of gatherings. Ya Allah, we are not qabil, Ya Allah, but we also know that it is not about qabiliyat, it's all about qabuliyat. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Arham ar that you please accept it from all of us. Ya Arham ar Ya Akram al Ya Allah, please, we beg you that you accept all of us for the service of your deen. Ya Arham ar Ya Allah, the students that graduate from the madrasa, the ulama, the mashayikh, Ya Allah, all of us, Ya Allah, everybody who is here, Ya Allah, we beg you that you please accept us to serve your deen, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, please make us from those people who can take your beautiful message to every single house, every single heart. And Ya Allah, please put that nur in our words, Ya Allah, because of the nisbat with our mashayikh. Ya Allah, that you please change the hearts of those people, and Ya Allah, Please, all the actions that they do, please write the ajr of their actions in our book of deeds as well, Ya Arham ar Ya Allah, Ya Akram al Akrameen, please save our Iman. Ya Allah, save Iman of our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, save Iman of every single person, and Ya Allah, until the day of judgment from our generations. Ya Allah, please save Iman of the youth, Ya Allah. 
Allah, all of this beauty is here. Ya Allah, this is the, they are our future. Ya Allah, we beg you, Ya Rahman Rahim, that you please save their iman. Ya Allah. Ya Allah, all the people have asked for du'as. You know their needs more than we do. We beg you, Ya Allah, that you please fulfill their needs from your infinite prayers. With khair, with barakat, with afiyat, with wusat, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, people who are spiritually or physically sick, please give them perfect cure. Ya Allah, people who are any sort of calamities, please remove those calamities from them. Ya Allah, people who are misguided, please guide them, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, we beg your pleasure at every single second of our lives, and especially, Ya Allah, at the time of our death. Ya Allah, give us the week of reciting kalima as our last words. Ya Allah, please make our graves from the gardens of paradise. Please, Ya Allah, make the questions of the graves easy for us. Ya Allah, on the day of judgment, please give us our books in our right hands. Please make us from your muqarrabeen. Ya Allah, give us the shade of your throne. Please give us the water from the blessed hands of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Please grant all of us his intercession and please, Ya Allah, let us all enter into paradise without questioning, without reckoning. And Ya Allah, please give us a space in the blessed feet of your beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ya Allah, most of it all, please grant all of us your perfect vision, Ya Allah. Rabbana taqabbal minna, innaka anta samiul alim, tawa alayna ya maulana, innaka anta tawa burahim. Ya Allah, please protect this madrasa, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, in this time of shahr and fitra, Ya Allah. Ya Rahman Rahimeen, when walking on your path, Ya Allah, looks like as if we are criminals. Ya Allah, please, we beg you that you protect this madrasa. Ya Allah, protect the, the teachers, the masayik, Ya Allah, everybody who is doing khidmat of this madrasa. Ya Allah, make it the markaz of this city, Ya Allah, from where, Ya Allah, the noor can spread all across the city and all across the country and all across the world, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, the ikram that these people have shown, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we have nothing to give them back. Ya Allah, we beg you that, Ya Allah, you give your love to them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, the way that they have invited us, Ya Allah, you invite them to your house, Ya Rahman Rahimeen. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيد محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله